So now that we have our grid positions in place, we can actually start using those grid positions on our tiles. Um, because right now, when we need to find the bottom right tile, we are running through all the tiles, and when we're done setting it, we just um, end up with the bottom left tile. But because we have a grid position now, we can actually use that grid position to find the last tile and put that as our edge tile, the, the maximum tile we can move to with our camera. And this um, this grid position is also going to be used by other things. For example, we're going to use the grid position for our pathfinding so that we can check a specific tile uh, and check if the tile on position 10.3 is uh, empty or if it, there's a tower on it and so on so we need somehow we need to be able to access all the tiles get a tile on a specific position very easily and check if that tile is walkable for example or check if that tile is our end tile or anything like that so we need some kind of structure that makes it easy for us to sp specifically pick a tile on a specific position and to do that we can create something called a dictionary and a dictionary is a type of collection uh, in C Sharp that is storing uh, items or objects under a key and a value pair. So it's using a key and a value pair. The key is the key that we use to access something in the dictionary. For example, we need tile on position 3.10. Well, then we ask the dictionary um, with a key called 3.10 and then it returns the tile on that position. So this might sound very, very confusing and everything, but let's try to make a simple example here before we actually start using them for our tiles, so you'll get an understanding of how they work, those dictionaries. So let, let's try to create a function. Let's go to um, the level manager script and make a private uh, private void called test dictionary. So this is just a function I'm creating right now. You can also do this to demonstrate what a dictionary is. First of all, we need to write dictionary. But your intelligence here, the helper function here, doesn't show you something called dictionary. And that's because we need to import the correct namespace to be able to use a dictionary. And Unity doesn't have that namespace by default in its template. So you need to go up here and write using system.collections.generic. So the dictionary is actually inside the generic namespace here. And right now you can see it's grayed out, and that's because we haven't included it yet. So, if we go down here, I, I also misspelled dictionary completely down here, but that's another thing. If you write dictionary, then you'll see dictionary will pop up now, and that you can see is a system collections.generics.dictionary. So it is in this namespace up here we just included. So to be able to use functionality, we always need to include the correct namespaces up here. So you can see if I write dictionary, then it asks for the key type. So let's just make a simple example here. The key type we would like to store something under is a string. So this is the data type we want to store something under. So when I ask this dictionary, I can ask it with a string. And what are we going to store? We are going to store uh, integers, for example. So on every position in the dictionary, um, we have an integer under a string key. And we can just call it test dict. So let's just call it dictionary instead. There we go. Equals new dictionary. There we go. So this is our dictionary, right? We need this part down here because if I do like this, we will get a null reference when we try to access this one because the dictionary haven't been instantiated. We haven't asked the computer or the RAM to give us some memory so that we can use this dictionary to store something in the memory. And this is exactly what we are doing here, right? Then we are telling the dictionary or the, the computer that we, or the operative system, sorry, that we need some memory allocated for our dictionary. And now it has that memory so we can store stuff in it. So that's why you need to repeat yourself with new over here. So now we have a dictionary. Next thing, we need to add something to the dictionary. And you can see up here, system collections generic is not grayed out anymore because we're actually using the namespace for something right here. Okay, so test the dictionary dot add. So we use add to add something. We can add something called age. For example, we would like the age and my age is uh, 28. So now we have added um, something under the string age. We can also like test dictionary dot add. And 
what else can we, let's say we have a character and we call it strength. This is only for testing. Let's say this character has 300 strength. strength. Um, let's do it with capital S as we did with H. And let's take one last thing, this dictionary dot add. And what should we add? We should add um, special something. Ah, it's called health or something. And it has 100 health. There we go. So now we have a three, three things added to the dictionary. Under the key age, we store 28. Under the key strength, we store 300. And under health, we store 100. So to get all these out, now we have stored them. We need to access them at some point. Well, then we can say, let's say debug.log. And we want to get the age out. So we can say test dictionary string key. Well, we won't need to get the age. And we can write my age is. Go. And let's just copy paste this two times. Then we can say my strength is and my health is. And then we can use health and use oops, like this. Then we can use strength and health like this, right? So it will write in the console my age is. We take the test dictionary, use a key, and then it should return the value stored in that key. And the same goes from strength and so on. So now we're using the dictionary for something. So if I take text dictionary function and just paste it up here. Yeah, test dictionary, there we go. And use it up here in my start function. And I save. And then if I jump back into the game here, you'll see that in the console it right, my age is 28, my strength is 300 and my health is 100. So now we just accessed all those things we stored in the dictionary. in the dictionary and pasted them out. So that's in general how a dictionary works. Now that we have that in place, we need to use the dictionary for something actually useful here in our game. And we need to create a new dictionary. So up here in our level manager, we need to make a property and it should be a um, dictionary of course. And it needs to take in a point so that we can ask a dictionary with a point and then the point should return the tile that actually is on that point. So comma tile script. And we can call this one tiles. Okay, as we did before, um, we will have to instantiate this tiles um, um, dictionary here. Because right now it's not instantiated, we haven't allocated any, any memory in our computer to use that tiles script, uh, not script, sorry, um, tiles dictionary. So we need to go to our create little function. And in the top here, before we start using it, we need to say tiles equals new dictionary point and tile script. So now we can store tile scripts under points in the dictionary. So I can ask this dictionary for a specific point and get the tile returned on that posi position. And this is how we can actually um, get the tile on the last point in the game. Okay. So right now we have a tiles dictionary, but it's actually empty and we will need to add every single tile when we create it uh, to this dictionary here. So later we are going to move the add functionality into the tile script. So the tile itself adds itself to the tiles dictionary. But for now we can actually just do it inside the place tile function here because we need to add some more things to the scripts before we can actually add it um, add the functionality to the tile script function or script here. So for now, let's do it inside the place tile function. First of all, we need to add it to dictionary. So we can write tiles add, and we need to add a new point because we need um, we need the position that the tile has and new point is actually x comma y here because that's the point in the game or in the grid that this tile is placed on. And we just created the tile up here called new tile. So we can just take new tile and add it down here by writing new tile. And there we go. So now we have, now we are sure that every single tile in our game is added to the new tiles function here, uh, not function, dictionary, sorry. Um, so that we can access every single tile by 
um, x and y position here. Because we're doing this, we can actually change the way that we're finding the max tile. So instead of returning the position every time we create a tile, we can delete this return here. On the last line here, we can delete return. And we can change the function to return void instead of a vector three position because we don't need that anymore. So when we create our max tile, this is not going to be needed anymore. So we can take this max tile equals remove it. So we only use place tile. And then down here, before we set the limits on our camera, we can write max tile equals. So our max tile equals tiles. And now we need to find the tile on the last position in our game world. And that's uh, by using a point, as you can see, it asks for point as a key. So new point, and it's asked for map, uh, map size, let's see here, map x minus one, comma map y minus one, that's the point. And then we need to say transform dot position. So now we are actually finding the max tile by saying, well, the maps x minus one, comma the maps y minus one, dot transform the position. So we take the position of the tile on the last position in on our map and store it into our max tile function here, or not function, variable, and then we pass it on to the camera limits. So let's see if we save now, everything should still work exactly as it did before. Let's try to play the game. And we can move, we can move up, we can move all the way to the edge here, I think. Let's see, we find the camera. Yes, it goes to the edge and down. I can also move all the way to the bottom here. So now we have everything working as before, but we're just using the tiles array now to do something actually. Or the tiles array, I keep saying wrong, uh, the tiles dictionary to do something. Okay, so now that we have our um, grid functionality, we will be able to place stuff around the world by saying I want to place a portal on point 10.10 .10, for example. So in the next video we will start looking at how we can t place our portals or we will start creating our portals in the game. So thank you very much for watching and remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page and so all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. For example, you can go to the Patreon page on the top of the screen right here where you can support me for five bucks and you can get every single script that I've ever created for uh, and all the assets for all my tutorials. You can also click the bottom uh, link and support me by getting this project or any of my other projects as a standalone product.